Hey y'all, I'm Elisa and I am the Scrappy Wife behind ScrappyWife.com and today I have a memory documenting video for you. This month I am going to challenge myself to work in an A5 size notebook. I picked up this one from Felicity Jane along with the entire Bailey line which was their February release. I will link the supplies down below. I'm not sure what is still in stock but you can check over at FelicityJane.com. I'm gonna get going on my Traveler's Notebook or my A5 notebook and set up the title page. And then I have a whole big stack of photos ready to be documented. So I will put you all on fast forward and we'll see what happens. Let's go. I have been loving using mixed media on my memory keeping layout. So I'm gonna continue that feel here and I'm just prepping my page with some gesso knowing that I'm going to use this Distress Oxide ink. It will definitely bleed through the paper. So I'm trying to prep the page so that the ink will be able to move freely across this paper. And once that is dry, I will start working with this ink. So I start with the Distress Oxide Peacock Feathers because I'm gonna kind of go with the combination of that teal and the coral. I think that is a super beautiful combination and a bit unexpected for February with all of the pink. So I have it right here on a, on a piece of just plastic um, trash, like plastic packaging, spreading on my paper, and then I didn't really like the dots, so now I'm just smushing it all around. And yes, it looks messy and out of control. That's part of what mixed media looks like, and it's all about layering. So now I'm gonna go back in with tumbled glass, which is kind of a light blue. I kind of wish from the beginning that I had mixed these two colors instead of layering them, but that's okay. So bringing in a little bit of the blue and giving that uh, kind of splotch a little bit more movement. I make sure it's nice and dry. And then you can see these are the pieces that I'm planning on kind of focusing on as I layer on top of my mixed media right here. Also planning on using some of these felt hearts that came as part of the Bailey kit. They are so cute and sweet and so they're going to be part of my layering as well. I want to bring in some of the coral on the background. I have this stencil, I believe it's from Illustrated Faith, and I'm adding pixie spray on the back so that it will stay in place right there. And I'm going to mix some different acrylic paints. And these are from the Handmade Modern line at Target. And I have a beautiful coral, but it's a little bit dark. It's not white the color I'm wanting to go with. So I'm mixing in some white to lighten it up. You can see trying to blend it really well here. Kind of messy, but that's okay. <laughs> Continuing to blend. And then I will just work that through my stencil. I have a much lighter color here. I'll work that through my stencil to add a little bit more interest to the background of this page. I'm not doing the stencil in a solid way. I want to kind of create a diagonal motion from the bottom left up towards the top right of this page. So you can see I fill in that area very carefully lifting it up. There's a little bit of dimension under there, re-sticking my stencil back down and using it again here at the bottom. And it gets a little messy. I have a piece, um, a little bit of the paint sneak through there at the bottom, but no big deal. Seeing how my pieces will layer up, I did let it dry in between that. I just cut that part out. And now I'm gonna start playing with layering elements. And I think this is one of the fun parts about Felicity Jane pieces is that you get a lot of things to work with and play with. And I'm loving the felt hearts, I'm loving the paper pieces and just trying to create a nice ensemble on this page without it being too busy. This is also a different size for me. I've never worked in an A5 journal before, so I am a little bit indecisive on how I want to fill up the page. Usually I'm someone that fills up almost an entire page, but this seems bigger, seems more appropriate to maybe have some white space. So you can see me kind of fussing and I'm trying to look at the stamps to see what I want to include, where I want things to go. And this is just part of the whole process. I think this is one of the fun parts of the process, playing with the products. I really like how that love kind of brings in all the colors that I'm going for. So I'll definitely keep that up there. I'm gonna stick with love and hearts and then maybe add some stamping here at the bottom as I try to fill in this page just a little bit more. At this point, I'm officially feeling more confident with the placement of all of these pieces, but I need something in that bottom left, mostly to cover up that paint that got a little bit out of control. So this is one of the journaling cards that comes with the Bailey kit, and I'm just gonna cut off the bottom, which makes it look like a little label, and that is where I will end up having my month label for this introduction page on my kit. But to layer behind it to bring that love down to the bottom, I will use this weathered gray Distress Oxide, stamp that, and then end up covering it 
partly up, but it brings in that same feeling. And now I'm just going to adhere all the pieces down that I'm sure that I know I like getting them all down and I will go through and embellish after those pieces are secured to the page. I'm using my ATG glider gun. It is fabulous. I just got a refill from scrapbook.com. I love this gun. I wish I had um, kind of gone for it sooner because a lot of my subscribers, a lot of you all recommended it as an adhesive and it has been fantastic. So I have, this is from the basics, the elements line from Felicity Jane. And I love this puffy alpha in this light pink kind of coral. It's really a pink, but it's kind of a corally color. It's kind of in between. And I'm just at adding February 20 so that I know it's the year 2020. I'll add my little comma there in a second. And that way it will form the title page for this particular month of my memory documenting. I've been challenging myself to use more of my supplies and especially my smaller embellishments. So I have these um, epoxy hearts and these are the type of things that I would used to hold on to and I would put like one or two on a page and be scared that I would use them all up. But this year I'm really going for it on the embellishments, trying to add lots of detail to my um, layouts, not to make them more complicated, but just to enjoy my supplies supplies really I mean these are things that we pick we pay for we love and so I'm a big proponent of using them up so finish with that title page now I'm gonna work on my first layout I cut this um, kind of sketchy plaid out and I'll again use my adhesive gun being really generous because this is out in the open there's no page protectors for it so I want to make sure it's gonna stick nicely and I'm just covering up the back of that page now I didn't have bleed through I definitely could have just worked straight on that paper but usually on my journal spreads I like to have one page or one half of the layout that is one of the printed papers now you see my couple of pictures I have one is from a Super Bowl get together with my parents and then that night my husband captured this picture of my kiddos reading my daughter reading to my twin boys and it was a really sweet moment and so I wanted to capture them both they both happened on the same day so they'll go on the same layout here I have Distress Oxide. I believe this one is in the Tattered Rose, or maybe, no, this is Sponge Sugar. And I'm using the new scrapbook.com blending tool that has the domed top, and it was fabulous. Guys, I'm super excited. I feel like it gave me a much smoother blend, and you can see I'm kind of creating a triangle feel with that blend going on. And then I grabbed this Tim Holtz stencil and using the weathered wood in that same applicator, just changing up the top. So I'm going to add a little bit of sketchy plaid over on the right side of the spread. And this turns out really cool because it's a similar pattern to what's happening on the left, but brings it in in kind of a different way. And something that I end up really liking is that I actually kind of let it bleed over to the side. So you'll see, I'm going to do it on both sides here. And, it, and by putting it on both sides, it really brought the whole layout together. Now I have this clear vellum pocket that is from a previous Felicity Jane kit, I believe from back in the fall. And I'm going to use it to hold that picture because the picture is really bright and saturated. And so I want to tone it down and it also gives me a place to journal adding a little bit more of the sponge sugar, bringing in some more pink because a lot of it gets covered up with the vellum card. And then I'm gonna come with the heart stamp that is in the Bailey kit, putting it on my small little stamp block here because it's important to use the right size stamp block. And I'm gonna do some tone on tone stamping. So that same sponge sugar pink, I am adding this heart kind of in a cascading motion and it will, kind of nestle around. You can see I'm put, putting the card, figuring out where the card's going to be. And it's not really in a pattern, just a little bit random. And I'll end up adding it to both sides. See, I'm bringing it over here and it ends up kind of looking like a check mark, I guess, if you followed it loosely. But in groups of three, adding that heart in there, adding one more right over here. And I really like the tone on tone stamping. It's subtle, but you do get the um, a cool effect, kind of a neat pattern. And now I'm going to come back with some gold glitter detail. And the way I'm going to do that is using the outline heart that also comes as part of the stamp set that is in the Bailey kit. And I will be using some embossing ink 
and some gold glitter embossing powder, which comes out super cool. I really, really like it. So getting my embossing ink right here, I prepped the page with my EK Success powder tool so that the embossing powder would not stick on areas that I didn't want it to. You can see all you have to do is stamp it down. It's a clear sticky ink. Forgot that my other elements are still on the page. It gets messy guys. When I craft, it gets messy. So here you go. I'm gonna fix it because some of the um, embossing glitter fell off. But see, so you're left with that beautiful glittered heart look. I'm gonna add groups of three on different parts of my paper, kind of overlapping some of the hearts that are already there. Again, covering it with the glitter, shaking off the excess, and it comes out so well. It's what I love about memory documenting is that there are no rules. This is a layout that is documenting Super Bowl. Sunday and so you might not think pink and gold and glitter but I do and I love it and you can pick whatever you want to document your memories the important part is that they're there the stories are being told and it is bringing you joy so go for all the pink all the hearts all the glitter that you want if you like floral go floral if you like bold colors go with bold colors do you I'm super pleased with the background at this point, so I'm go, gonna go ahead and take the sticky back off of this pocket. It's really helpful that the adhesive is already on there, and because it's not a full pocket the way it adheres on the page, it actually is less bulky. And here's my picture. I'll be putting it on a journaling card with those hearts in the background, and then the dotted grid on the back creates a perfect place for me to add my own journaling in, which I will do in just a bit. A little bit of adhesive went a little bit crazy, but stick that in. And you can see because of the vellum, it really tones down the really saturated colors in that picture. My kiddos, my boys have a bright red uh, bedspread. And so it was, it was really kind of dominating the picture, but when it's behind the vellum, it tones it down and makes it fit into the layout just a bit more. Perhaps one of the best stamps I think that came this month. I don't know. I really like the stamp set, but this one is a really cute label stamp and it says date and details on it. And so you can see I'm looking, I'm trying to decide if I want to stamp it on a different piece of paper, but I'm going to go ahead and risk it and stamp it straight on to my layout. I get a really nice crisp impression, which I'm excited about. And then I'm going to take this kind of wonky scalloped paper right here and I'm just going to cut out a small section of it fussy cut out those scallops and use it to decorate the edges of my stamped label. This is a great way to really get the most out of your 12 by 12 papers. If you don't mind spending some time fussy cutting, which I don't mind, you can really get a lot from these papers. There's gorgeous floral images. There's this cute scallop that almost ends up looking like a washi tape. And so I just trim it off and then I run these pieces through my Xyron sticker maker to uh, add adhesive to the back once they're run through. And then I'm able to add them and they really add a sweet detail to my date and details section over there. And I really like how it comes out. I also throw in one of the heart paper pieces that is in the Bailey pack to put in that nice little square that is there. But you can see it almost looks like a washi tape, but it's a fun element and brings in a little bit more black to the page, which I like to contrast with that pink. And it really brings attention to that detail box over in the bottom right hand corner. The other cool thing about this particular stamp is that there are two options, a grid and a dot that you can use to fill in. So I'm using that spun sugar distress oxide in the grid, and then I will layer on top of it that little sweet pink heart and fill in that area. All right, now that the right side of the page is really coming together, it's time to take my attention over to the left side and the photo of my family watching the Super Bowl. And I'm gonna use that same kind of wonky scalloped paper because I used it over on the right. So I'll use it as the um, primary matting for that picture. And then I'll just work on adding some soft layers to it because I really don't need a lot going over on that page. The background is very busy, so there's no need to just go nuts with the layering. I'm going to use my um, scissors that kind of create a torn edge here just to add a little bit more 
texture. I'll mount my picture on top of that. And then I'm actually going to grab for some pink tissue paper. This was just in my stash. I will put it on top here with my ATG gun. And I like tissue paper because it's going to add a little hint of that pink without being too solid. And you get to create kind of a neat texture, some in interesting dimension without adding a lot of bulk into your memory keeping album or journal, whatever you're choosing to do. It did feel a little bit weird to be working in this slightly larger album. And I know that sounds weird. A5 is not that much bigger than a TN, but there is more space and you have a little bit more freedom as far as the size of the pictures and how much white space you're gonna include. And so I found it an interesting challenge. I'm not sure if I'll stick with an A5 all year long. We'll just see. I like to change it up. I like to keep it interesting, but I think it's a fun challenge and I've really enjoyed it so far. So I have some of the classic Felicity Jane black and white grid washi that I use to kind of add a little bit more definition to where my picture is going to go. I adhere that down with my adhesive gun. And then I also have this uh, paper piece. All that series of hearts kind of matches with the hearts on the back of the journal piece. So I'm thinking I'm going to use that, but I actually end up trading it out. It's just a little bit too much color since I was primarily sticking with black and white and pink, I wasn't ready to introduce such a bold piece. So I changed it out. I'm gonna go through my other paper pieces. I love that sweet tag and I like that phrase happy that fits perfectly with the picture. And then I'm gonna use, these are Felicity Jane kind of tiny letters and I forget what kit these are from, but they um, do, they are foam letters and I'm adding my title, title Super Bowl Sunday with them using my tweezers to get all of those letters in the right place. We are nearing the end now because I'm going to start adhering all of the pieces down. And as I'm putting these pieces on over here, I realize that it's not super easy to pull that journaling tag or that picture out of that pocket. So I'm going to add kind of a little tab. And the way I'm going to do that is, again, choosing my funky scallop paper over here, adding a little bit of fussy cutting detail because it really echoes nicely what's going on in that detail stamp in the corner. So I will trim that out and then I'll use this to create a tab on my journaling card. That way it'll be easy to pull out when I want to read the journaling on the back, just adhering that down. And then I'll add this little heart paper piece that came in the kit to add a little bit more detail there on the front. I'm getting better with my gun on these small pieces. It's getting a little bit easier to use. After this, I will add some stickers down there in the corner, add some journaling, and this page will be done. I'd love to hear below if you're like me and you go with whatever colors or style that you're feeling at the moment and not necessarily coordinate them with what is going on in the pictures. Like, would you use the pink and the hearts to document Super Bowl Sunday or is it just me that kind of goes a little bit random? Let me know if you are a theme person or if you are a go with the flow kind of person. I would like to hear in the comments below. All the supplies I used are linked down below, and there's also a link to sign up for my email list. I issue a newsletter every couple of weeks that has crafty tips, organization hacks, and just all kinds of scrappy fun. So feel free to join in. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and consider hitting that subscribe button as well as that bell notification button. I hope you have a fabulous day, and as always, keep it creative.